How much does armour actually weigh? Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So rather than talking about armour as a whole, we're going to look at something very specific here, and that is how much does the cuirass actually weigh on a 15th century, so let's say early to late, we'll cover the whole 15th century, how much does a cuirass weigh, that's breastplate, backplate with the fold and the tassets, on a 15th century armour? Well, luckily, uh, my good friend Augusto, um, who some of you will know from some of my previous videos I did at the Was Collection, um, he is a armourer and he's also a researcher of armour. And I'm just going to dispense with this helmet. Um, and um, he collates a lot of original data of period armour, 14th century and 15th century principally. And um, he has done this job for us. Uh, so what we're going to look at here is a document that he's put together and he shared this around on Facebook and other pages. Um, but he shared it, the place I saw it was on the 15th century um, armour page, which I'll also put a link to below. So if you're interested in 15th century armour, have a check out of that Facebook page there. And he has put some data of original cuirasses um, from the 15th century and how much they weigh. And you'll notice there's quite a lot of variation there. Now, before I go on, we're going to have a look at what is a cuirass. So you will hopefully know from these uh, pictures that you've seen so far roughly what a cuirass is now. But luckily, I have a cuirass here and I'm going to weigh mine. So um, Augusto posted on the uh, Facebook page for 15th century armour uh, saying, how much does your cuirass weigh? And I immediately wanted to know how much mine weighed. Now, it has to be said, a cuirass or cuirass is not the easiest thing to weigh in the world at all. Luckily, I do own some digital postal scales, which I use to weigh uh, parcels containing swords usually that I'm posting around the world so I'm going to use those and um, luckily also a 15th century cuirass does break down into constituent parts so we can weigh the individual parts and then add them together because weighing the whole thing together unless you have some kind of hanging scale is not a very easy thing to do um, so we're going to do that but first of all let's have a look at what the constituent parts of the cuirass are so first and foremost you've seen this element before in one of my other videos uh, this armor incidentally was made by uh, Mark Vickers of St George Armoury and it is hardened carbon uh, steel armor so what we have here is the top part or the bit that goes around the upper essentially the rib cage um, and this is the breast and back and I've shown that being put on before and you'll notice that it is of course uh, hinged on one side um, and strapped on the other traditionally it's not always the case but traditionally hinged on the left hand side that being the side that you're most likely to receive heavy blows from a right-handed person on and strapped on the left hand side, strapped over the top and that goes around the upper part, it's close fitting to allow full mobility of the arms and that goes around the upper part of the body, essentially breastplate and backplate. Um, and so that is the upper element, but you'll notice it has, this is a Milanese export star harness, you'll notice it has a strap in the middle which connects to the lower two halves which are known as the placard, okay? And attached to the placard, in the case of a Milanese harness, is what is called the fold, and here it is, okay? So oh, this is actually quite a heavy bit because it's got that skirt. So we've got articulations here, and if I just show the inside there, it's connected, uh, attached on leathers. Um, this is all hardened carbon as well, um, blued as you can see, um, and we've got essentially a, a demi placard, a, a placard that goes over, overlaps the uh, top part of the cuirass. You can see why these are not easy things to weigh, incidentally, hopefully, Binner. And they're fairly weighty, but they have to be because this sort of thing has to withstand polack strikes, lance strikes, obviously things like swords and daggers quite easily, but these kind of heavy strikes it has to be able to take. And you've got a similar plate on the back. And again here you'll notice it has hinges on the left hand side and straps on the left, uh, on the right hand side. Um, so in addition to that, so we've got upper uh, part of the torso, then we've got the lower part of the torso, and then attached to that we've got the fold, okay, which is the kind of skirt, um, and then of course normally you'd have a, a male um, skirt underneath that as well, sometimes even a full male shirt with Milanese harness. Um, but we're just going to weigh the cuirass, but there is one other element, and you'll notice from Augusto's um, uh, data sheet there that sometimes these are included and sometimes there aren't and he's noted that and these are the tassets and these hang down if I just grab the lower 
part of the cuirass again. Oh, it's a fairly difficult thing to lift up on camera. There we go. These attach uh, like that to there and they protect the junction essentially between your groin kind of area and your upper legs. So they protect the same area that's protected by the male skirt. Uh, kind of your thighs as upper thighs um, but they also give great mobility and they can kind of fold out of the way um, if you're fighting on foot or sitting on a horse or whatever. Now I should also say that my particular harness also has extra tassets um, around the side and back and this was something that was popular for fighting on foot. It makes the cuirass more inconvenient to wear on horseback because obviously with a medieval saddle, a medieval saddle is very different, certainly a war saddle is very different to a modern riding saddle and the riding position is quite different as well. So in a medieval saddle your legs are kind of straighter but the saddle is quite high at front and back so it holds you in, it protects you better as well uh, but it also potentially would get in the way of armour but because you've got that protection of the saddle there you don't need as much armour around there. So there's often a big difference between armour for fighting on foot and armour uh, for horseback fighting and sometimes you have modular parts that you can swap out for one or the other. So in my case I do have extra tassets for fighting on foot but I'm not going to wear weigh those for two reasons. Number one because I think according to Augusto's measure we're only really looking at the main two tassets at the front being added and also my smaller tassets are packed away in a box that I can't get to at the moment so I can't weigh them anyway. So right we're going to weigh those now and we're going to see compared to those originals where my cuirass ends up. So here we go, I've set it on kilograms because that's what we're using here. Let's have a go at uh, weighing the upper part of the cuirass first. I have to delicately balance it on here in such a way that it's not going to fall off but I'm also showing all the weight. So it is 3.365 kilograms, 3.365 kilograms, okay. So let's note that down. Okay, next up we're going to measure the um, lower part of the cuirass and the uh, fold. Now this is, this is going to be the trickiest part to weigh. I've got to do a balancing act here. Let's see if I can manage that. Oh, that's almost all on. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. That is 6.27 kilograms. So um, as you can see of course um, 6.6 this is heavy compared to the upper part um, th basically because of the fold because you've got a lot in the fold you've got the hinges and you've got a lot of overlapping plates um, so yeah so 6.27 let's make a note of that and finally we're going to do the tacits so I've got both of them here I don't need to uh, do oh no too early too early Right, ready? Let's put them both down together. There we go. One kilogram. 1.03 kilograms, but pretty close to a kilogram. It's surprising actually how heavy the tassets are. I wouldn't have thought they were that heavy, but there we go. So 1.03 kilograms. So I certainly think that was super interesting. I mean, Augusto's uh, data sheet is definitely the most interesting thing here rather than my weighing my own armour and making a video about it. But for me personally, I have to say that knowing that my armour is certainly in the correct ballpark for historical cuirasses based on a good set of data that Augusto's put together uh, of 15th century originals is really good to know. So just for anyone who hasn't done the maths instantly in your, in your head, so my uh, my cuirass without the tassets is 9.635 kilograms, call it 9.6 kilograms, and with the tassets it takes it up to 10.6, 10.7, so 10.665 to be precise, kilograms, um, which I find very interesting and it puts my cuirass as a whole with the tassets very much within historical ballpark. But what's also worth mentioning, two, two important things to note here. Number one, you will notice from Augusto's um, data that the originals vary a lot. They, they, you can't necessarily look at a cuirass and guess how heavy it's going to be. And these are original cuirasses attending, intended to be used in combat made by master armourers of their time. Um, so that's what we should be basing our replicas on. So they vary a lot presumably for different preferences, different purposes, different tendencies within areas, within times. Who knows? Lots of different factors. So very, very interesting how much variation there is. But also the second important thing that's very important to know is that modern recreated armors, a lot of the time, and definitely in the case of mine, they don't vary uh, within an individual plate. Any plate of my armor doesn't vary in thickness as much as the originals would have done because the originals um, a lot of the time would have been uh, forged out in such a way that they 
uh, within an individual plate they might be very thick where they needed to be for example at the top of a helmet or the front at the front of a helmet or the um, front of a, a knee or a point of an elbow or something like this so they might be very thick there but as you get towards the edges they might get very thin much thinner than the modern replica stuff um, so there was a lot more variation within individual plates than there are in modern uh, made armor which for the most part is made out of sheet steel and is more regular in its thickness that's not always the case and we do find some original plates which are surprisingly regular across uh, across throughout their thicknesses but but generally speaking so thank you very much to augusto for sharing that data if nothing else, uh, I mean, hopefully you found this interesting, but if nothing else, I now know and feel confident that my cuirass, I don't know about the rest of my armor, but my cuirass at least is of roughly historically correct weight. And uh, finally, I'll just say, so I said near the beginning of 2020, you'd be getting more armor videos. And you will, uh, but it has been delayed by the inevitable, I'm afraid, uh, lockdown and the the ripple effects that have spread out from that. So uh, one of the key factors to me being, being able to uh, do things with my armour are what goes underneath the armour. And unfortunately, that has gone completely haywire. Plans for that have gone haywire due to the fact that um, I couldn't get a uh, new arming doublet made and things like this and voiders and um, uh, uh, standard of mail and everything else. So... Basically, I've got my armour sitting here. I love it, uh, but I haven't done an awful lot with it. But hopefully this is something that's been useful and interesting for you. Check out the 15th Century Armour page on Facebook. Check out Augusto's work because it's really good stuff. Um, and thank you for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you really soon again on Scholar Gladiatora channel for another video. Might be armour related, might be something else. Cheers for watching.